greens today. <laughs> Why do I say greens? Because it's in greens that you get your highest amount of minerals. And minerals are not lost with the cooking. It's only lost if you throw the water away you actually cook it in. So how come Aussies are mineral deficient? Now, if someone's living on fast food, obviously they're going to be mineral deficient. But there are people today in Australia, they're having their fruits and vegetables every day, and they're still mineral deficient. Well, we have to now look at the way the food's grown. You see, traditionally, ground was always fed compost between crops. When you got a crop in the ground, say you got tomatoes in the ground, that tomato plant will pull certain minerals out of the soil to cause the tomatoes to grow. You need to eat food to stay alive. But what if we told you that the very food you eat is slowly deteriorating your body from the inside? The very idea of such a thing would creep into one's soul. But sadly enough, it is all true. And it's not junk food or fast food. It includes them as well as the healthy food that you eat. What are these silent killers in your diet? And how are they harming your health? Stick around till the end of the video to find out. What do we mean when we say that the food you eat is slowly killing you? It isn't like you are being fed poison. It's actually the specific deficiencies in our everyday food that are harming us. There are many heavily processed foods in stores nowadays, but most of them are severely lacking in essential minerals. Even if you're feeling all right, understand that mineral deficiency is like a silent threat. It slowly affects you, and you won't realize its impact until it's too late. These deficiencies will eventually evolve into diseases as you age. Let's learn about some of them and how to fight against them. Table salt is a dangerous is a dangerous salt number nine the table salt trap iodine is like the heart of thyroid health because it's the gland's main nutrient it's not only used in that but selenium helps convert iodine into thyroxine which is a vital thyroid hormone interestingly barbara o'neill says that the table salt that you normally use is just a trap People don't realize that they have thyroid gland issues. They may be underactive or overactive, but all of it can be linked to iodine deficiency. Barbara suggests a simple test that can determine iodine levels. Apply iodine to the inside of your arm and create a brown smudge. If the iodine disappears within an hour, then it indicates low iodine levels. For the people who have tested positive, you don't need to worry because you won't die yet. Barbara shares a simple remedy for this. Apply iodine daily until it remains visible for about five hours. Now's the time for the big answer. What food gives you iodine? Surprisingly enough, there is not much in your diet at all. We used to rely on fortified salt or iodized salt to counter iodine deficiency. But even that loses 50% of its iodine content within half an hour of opening. According to Barbara, we need to use Lugol's solution. It's an iodine supplement that's available at pharmacies and using it in your diet can be a more reliable source. Even if it's inaccessible, betadine is another iodine-based antiseptic that will help maintain adequate iodine levels. Number eight, calcium. Next up on the list is the calcium problem. Many of you must be thinking that there is no reason for us to worry about calcium since we have been taking milk since birth. That's actually not the case. Milk alone cannot supplement calcium deficiency, and sometimes it may even be the cause. When sunlight's ultraviolet rays fall on the skin, the cholesterol stored in it is converted into vitamin D. So the ultraviolet rays from the sun hit the skin and convert a form of cholesterol just under the skin to vitamin D. And vitamin D is essential in the assimilation of calcium and the utilization of calcium in the body. Vitamin D is also being hailed today as the anti-cancer vitamin. In fact, the research is showing that it can stop cancer in its tracks and even convert the cell back to a healthy cell. That's quite remarkable. Vitamin D is very important because it is responsible for the proper functioning of calcium in the body. Sometimes, even the lack of sunlight may cause calcium deficiency. Barbara O'Neill has a very interesting way of putting it. She says that milk is damaging our body because it is high in calcium, but at the same time, it's very high in animal protein. An animal protein is the last thing you want to use as fuel in your body. It's because a significant portion of animal protein results in acidic waste, like sulfur waste. The body tries to save you, so it uses calcium, a high alkaline component, to neutralize this acid. At the end of the day, how much calcium is left in the body? None. 
This is why the countries that consume the most dairy have the highest number of osteoporosis cases. So what should we do? Should we just quiet down and accept our fate? Barbara tells us the solution for that as well, and it's to eat greens. Well, what she meant was that animals like the elephant have such strong bones, and it's all through grass. We should follow nature's example and eat dark green veggies like broccoli and other leafy greens to maintain strong bones. Number seven, magnesium. Magnesium is also one of the deadliest silent killers that you have neglected all your life. But it's your time to make use of it so that you don't suffer from its deficiency. Well, to be precise, you won't die from it, but it's still pretty bad because you will be getting hypomagnesemia. There are varying symptoms of it, but the point remains that most of us are not getting much of it in our diet. We will ask you, where do you think we get our magnesium from in our diet? You don't have to get embarrassed because that's what we are here for, to tell you these things. You just need to be consistent in eating leafy vegetables like spinach, legumes, whole grains, etc. Because if you regularly take them, you will probably stay on the green side of the chart. Barbara shares that there are cases when you feel severe morning sickness, which causes your mood to go bad for a long time. Morning sickness is a magnesium deficiency. And some women suffer for months and months. So all they need to do is get magnesium. Take even four doses a day. So morning sickness is a magnesium deficiency. She says that it's all just magnesium deficiency. So all they need to do is take magnesium, not the rock, but in supplements. Four times a day is enough to make you feel like yourself again. Number six, the potassium sodium imbalance. Why do you think so many people are diagnosed with high blood pressure? It's because of the parts of the diet that are silently killing us. You don't need to quit your diet because you're scared. After all, Barbara tells us exactly what we need and how we can achieve the right balance. Firstly, why is there an imbalance? It's because today's highly processed foods cause you to consume high sodium and very low amounts of potassium. To understand the depth of this balance, we need to listen to Barbara's insights on the right intake of sodium and potassium for optimum health. She tells us that there is a balance outside and inside our cells, where potassium is present inside the cells and sodium is present outside. They work to give us the sodium potassium pump, which helps us in practically everything. What's happening nowadays is that we are not eating our potassium through fruits and vegetables, and we are increasing table salt intake by putting it everywhere. There is an added intake of salt and not enough potassium to offset it. But when someone's not eating enough fruits and vegetables, and that's where you get most of your potassium, and they're putting table salt on everything far too much, what happens now is sodium levels rise and potassium levels drop. This makes it so that there is now a high concentration of sodium and almost nothing left inside the cell. Thanks to the processes of osmosis and diffusion, the cell will now swell because of the higher sodium presence outside the cell. What's this condition called? It's high blood pressure. We know that this is just the beginning and high blood pressure will cause many other not so happy diseases. So you guys better get this silent killer in control and eat as many of the fruits and vegetables as you can find. Number five. Iodine illusion. We just talked about it, but it's such a big scam that it needs another point from a different angle in this video. We need to pay more attention to the iodine for our thyroid, and although we have already given you alternatives, it doesn't mean you can overdo the supplements in your food. To understand the mystery of iodine, we need to hear Barbara explain how table salt is made. There are around 92 minerals in seawater, 30% is sodium, and almost 50% is chloride. Of those 92 minerals, 30%, approximately 30% is sodium. And of those 92 minerals, approximately 50% is chloride. They dye it and then add some aluminum and voila, you have your table salt ready. So what man does is he scoops up the first crystals formed, he bleaches them white, puts aluminum with it so that it runs freely and there's your table salt. Barbara exclaims that table salt is a very dangerous thing that does more harm to your body than you can imagine. Some experts tell us that these two minerals are so harsh that if you were to inject it into your bloodstream, you would die. Table salt is a dangerous, is a dangerous salt because we now have two very harsh minerals that if you were in to inject both of those into the blood, you would die. We have already explained the sodium potassium pump above, so you must realize that you are eating an unbalanced product in your food. 
Is there no way to enjoy our meals with the added seasoning of salt? That's a very valid argument, and the answer is yes. You can enjoy it, but instead of table salt, you need to start using Celtic salt. For one thing, it's pretty darn safe, and for the other million reasons, you will just have to stick around to find out. Number four, the mineral absorption. Throughout this video, we have explained that there are so many silent killers in our diet that we can't even discuss them all. But one of the most important things that causes us to not absorb the needed minerals is a diet that lacks mineral-rich foods in the first place. Many times, farmers are not very resourceful or don't have enough funds to fertilize the soil when they sow the fields. A field that has been sown multiple times before now lacks the minerals needed by plants, and so the use of fertilizers becomes a necessity for healthy crops. The mineral-deficient soil then produces mineral-deficient crops, which we eat, and our bodies absorb close to nothing because the plants barely have any essential minerals. So, we can work to make better food choices and select food that is properly grown to be a part of our diet, such as from credible suppliers. But there's a lot of people eating fruits and vegetables every day and they're mineral deficient. Why? Because the soil's deficient. Yeah. And if the soil's deficient, the plant will be deficient. And if the plant's deficient, the person that eats that plant will be... Number three. The fast foods. Obviously, when people live on fast food that is totally mineral deficient, they're going to be mineral deficient. There is no need for an argument or explanation here. Fast food is bad for you. Every adult knows this, but we still see a huge number of buyers. Barbara tells us that if you are living on fast food, then you are mineral deficient. It's so bad that you have no idea. This isn't even silent killing anymore. It's a murder in broad daylight. Because according to Barbara, mineral deficiency like this is causing a large percentage of DNA damage. And they're finding out that they're mineral deficient and it's because of the way that they're grown. So that is one of the reasons. And as you can see by what the research is showing, even 92% of DNA damage is being caused by a mineral deficient. We are introduced to almost 30,000 new chemicals every year. We can't stop them, but we can choose to have a healthy organic lifestyle. Because if we do that, we have a chance to fight against these chemicals and super processed industry food items. These chemicals seep down into our foods somehow, like contaminants or preservatives. And at the end of the day, they bring nothing but side effects. Even if they don't, there's still no need for us to take a chance. By what the research is showing, even 92% of DNA damage is being caused by a mineral deficient. Number two, Celtic salt. We have told you before, and we have mentioned Celtic salt a lot. The reason for it is pretty simple. It's almost like a risk-free salt. The people with table salt only get two of the total 92 minerals that are found in seawater. And this happens because they are the fastest when it comes to crystallization, so they are simply scooped out early. This causes the other 90 minerals that were supposed to balance the other two minerals to be left out. So what you are eating is a very unstable product. On the other hand, we recommend Celtic salt because unlike table salt, which contains only two out of the 92 minerals, it is a hand harvested salt that contains about 82 minerals. Celtic salt contains 82 minerals. It's a hand harvested sea salt. So the minerals are in the Celtic salt in their balanced form. What about Himalayan salt? In many places, Him Himalayan salt is a lot easy to get. There's 70 about 75 minerals. So it's pretty good. But I prefer the Celtic salt. And one reason is that the Celtic salt has three magnesiums. It contains magnesium chloride and magne magnesium bromide and magnesium sulfate. Magnesium is a water-hungry molecule and this explains why the Celtic salt is such a moist salt, especially when we've had a lot of rain. You can also use Himalayan salt, but it only has 70 to 75 minerals, so Celtic is better. Another interesting fact is that Celtic salt has the right concentration of magnesium. Since magnesium is a hydrating element, it's going to aid in cellular hydration, which is what we need to stay healthy. Number one, the cellular energy connection. With all things in mind, even if you think that you have a healthy diet, it's not always the case, and proper mineral balance is needed for enough cellular energy to be produced. Barbara explains that if we absorb the proper required minerals, then not only will we stay safe from diseases, but we won't have to worry about fatigue as well. If you are feeling unusually exhausted, remember that your body may not be producing the required amount of energy. 
The reason for that? Mineral deficiency. Thank you for watching the video. We hope that you liked our list of silent killers in your food. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on health.